The cover page of One Piece Chapter 1077, should have noticed sooner, features Caesar Clown and Judge Vinsmoke. They're exhausted from fighting each other and seem to be on the verge of a truce thanks to their shared realization that Dr. Vegapunk was the problem all along. Inside one of Egghead's factories, an injured Sento Maru urges the island's inhabitants to evacuate immediately. The sci-fi looking crowd can't help but wonder what's going on, and especially question why the pacifistas have been deployed all over Egghead. Surrounded by them all, Sento Maru begins to speak about the island Ohara, which had been wiped off the world map one day. He further specified that this was because they defied the world government. As a refresher, we're reminded that the island of Ohara had the largest historical library in the world. The scholars were all killed by marines for deciphering the poneglyphs. And lastly, the only one to survive the destruction was Nico Robin. Sento Maru figures that if the world government is willing to eliminate the smartest man in the world, that they've weighed all the pros and cons and will stop at nothing to erase him. Right now, the situation on Egghead is shaping up to be worse than the events of Ohara's destruction, which is saying something. We're looking at an almost marine forward level news event already. So Sento Maru is growing impatient, waiting for Luffy to transport Vegapunk. Cutting to the command room, Luffy and company are having a hard time with their opponents. Luffy is using Gear 4th, while Luchi attacks with his human beast form. And even then, they can hardly get a spear to budge. Kaku, remaining in his human form, goes after S Hawk with a Tempest Kick Slaughter, while Zoro uses a one sword draw and sheath move. But not even these powerful combinations can do much more than get their clothes dirty, much to Luffy's disbelief. Luffy is really frustrated now. These two got back on their feet in no time. It's to the point where he compares their durability to that of Kaido's, which as a guy who fought Kaido longer than anyone else and pulled out all these stops to keep him down, that's a major statement. In facing them, Zoro comes to a sudden realization that the Seraphim resemble his previous opponent on Wano, King. This really surprises Shaka, who's in disbelief that Kaido had a Lunarian on his crew, which Zoro couldn't solidly confirm nor deny. Shaka would then recognize him to have been Alber, a former Punk Hazard test subject that escaped with Kaido. I'm not sure why him being on the crew would be such a big surprise given the circumstances. Regardless, King's blood is now being used by the Seraphim. With this information, Zoro gives the other guys a heads up that they should look out for the flames on their backs since they're pretty much invincible when they're lit. Zoro even apologizes for causing them to waste energy by not noticing sooner. But Rob Lucci is grateful for the information regardless. But after Zoro described the matching characteristics, Lucci joined Luffy and Kaku in yelling at him. Maybe Zoro doesn't see color after all. Luffy questions where Shaka is going and it turns out that he has an idea of where Stella might be. S Hawk isn't willing to let him leave, but is stopped by Zoro, who yells at him to get out of their way since they're in a rush. On the third floor of Building A, we get a very nice shot of Nami as she summons both Zeus and her own courage to face S Shark. Although he looks like a kid version of her friend, he's heard of her real friends. She tries to verbally convince herself that he's not adorable while closing her eyes as Zeus supports her by proudly taking the initiative. Nami's big mom level lightning bolt actually fries S Shark, and Nami feels awful about it. But as he fell, as Shark splashed into the ground using his green blood ability, which Brooke noticed. Quickly going into a panic and shifting his head back in place, Brooke would cry out for Nami to run as Zeus himself was now shocked with disbelief. As S Shark closed in on her like a hungry predator, Brooke prepared an attack, but would soon be overshadowed by an angry Sanji swift approach. With both legs, he strike and damage S Bear more severely than Luffy and Luchi were able to against S Bear together. Having launched S Shark off the map, Sanji would check on Nami's condition while yelling at the Seraphim. If he's managed to actually do some notable damage here, despite S Shark having his back flame active, we could be looking at a whole new level for Sanji. It took Zoro pouring out all his hockey against King for him to win, so it'll be interesting to see how Sanji does here. And with a sinister look, Sanji is now determined to execute S Shark for upsetting Nami. Now if you notice, his eyebrow has flipped around. This could be the cruelty of his genetic modifications kicking in. And when it comes to strength, this all tracks well since Sanji was actually able to match King's physical blows more easily than Zoro could back on Onigashima. On the third floor of Building C, Punk Lilith yells at a snake for turning York into stone. We then get another nice shot this chapter as Lilith fires a bubble gun at a snake who easily knocks the creation aside. Usopp shocked for a moment before a snake suddenly collapsed. And for the first time, one of the Seraphim begins to speak. Confused by what's happened, Lilith then explains that the bubble is made from sea energy, making it the weakness of green blood and devil fruit users. 
Usopp and Pythagoras begin to cheer Lilith on, who enjoys the praise as Frankie decides to remain on task and capture the Seraphim while they still can. But a suddenly talkative S Snake would quickly yell and kick him away. Unfortunately, the effects didn't last very long since the bubble only grazed her. S Snake would adorably pout and fire off more shots than Ja, while Frankie came at her from behind with the massive bubble in hand. Her observation hockey must be pretty lacking because Frankie did manage to pin her down with it. Usopp and Lilith would begin the celebrations early as Frankie enjoyed his triumph. But once S Snake appealed to his sensitivity, he immediately folded and let his guard down. And just like that, she managed to one-shot our boy Frankie and turn him into stone. Usopp begins to panic while Lilith fires off countless shots, all of which S Snake was able to evade. Appearing before them like a cute little angel, she managed to turn these two to stone just as quickly. This is now officially the fourth statue of Usopp in the One Piece world. The first was on Skypiea. The second is on the Tontada pirate ship, Usoland. The third is on Dressrosa, and now there's this one of the real Usopp. This is a really big deal. We're officially down two Straw Hat pirates. For them to ever rejoin this story again, a snake will need to depetrify them. Not even the real Hancock can undo this. This means that no matter what, some level of resolution with a snake is guaranteed. And if she's speaking and communicating like this, actual conversations become possible. And like how Luffy is immune to Hancock's powers because he's not into her like that, because Luffy's like Michael Jordan when it comes to kids, he'll probably be immune to her powers too. If Hancock ever finds out about this biological child of hers, and they're able to share a love for Luffy, we could be looking at a whole new family dynamic for the three. But of course, the surefire way to get the Seraphim to obey orders will be to have a high-ranking official make the decision. So for all we know, Luffy could end up forcing a member of the Gorosei to make the call. But at the same time, what's stopping S Snake from destroying them now that they've been turned to stone? This is quickly becoming one of the most challenging situations these Straw Hats have ever been faced with. Elsewhere, things would only get worse underground in the former Dofu lab. As Shaka made his way in, he'd notice several people being contained, who would then wonder if he was the one responsible for their capture. This Devil Fruit Lab must have been abandoned for a very long time, and completely untouched for some reason, because Shaka had no idea these Cypherpole agents were here at all. Meanwhile, they weakly begged for their lives. Shaka and Dr. Vegapunk Stella would then notice each other. Relieved to see his senior, Shaka would wonder who did this to him. But much to Shaka's confusion, Vegapunk would question who he'd come along with, as we'd see the peaking of a gun. And just like that, Shaka has been shot in the head. Sudden deaths are hard to believe when it comes to One Piece, especially after Kianmon. But things are escalating quickly, and nobody knows what's going on. The Straw Hat's only tactical hope, and the only one who knows Stella's location, has been taken down. Escape is looking impossible. The One Piece community at this point seems to think the traitor is either Esplamingo, the neglected evil of Vegapunk's brain, Spandam, the Yeti Cool Brothers, Vivi's Duck, or Hattori. What about you? As always, I'm Slice Votaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.